Thank you very much uh, for joining us here today. We've got a we've got a packed house here today, which is great to see. Obviously, uh, Microsoft Teams at this time is a, a hot topic for everybody out there. So it's great to see some familiar names uh, returning for another one of these sessions. Uh, fantastic. Thank you very much for your support. So um, <clears throat> today we're going to talk about Microsoft Teams, uh, where it's going, share some great customer stories around uh, some of the successes that we've seen uh, through through Jazit, who's from Microsoft. And then uh, we'll sort of talk a little bit about uh, where it's going and then how live tiles can support uh, with uh, with getting it implemented uh, in your business. So I'll start the presentation here. Hopefully that will flick over now. Beautiful work. So I'll introduce uh, <clears throat> the two of us. So as usual, you have me, Chris Likonenko, the host and uh, of the Intelligent Workplace podcast. Uh, and joining me here on, you can see on the screen here, is Jazz Bazra, Pro Product Marketing Manager from Microsoft. Uh, Jazz has been with Microsoft for five years and is described as a next level team ship ninja. Um, Jazz, I've got no idea what that means. Can you describe that to us, explain it? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I think I'm the only person in the world with that title. I hope I was the last time that I checked. Um, it's, it's interesting, a couple of years ago, um, I did a bit of a reflection on kind of where I'm at, where I'm at in my career um, and why I connected so strongly with this notion around teamwork. Um, and I realized it's actually because every job and industry I've ever worked in has been 100% reliant on a team to actually accomplish anything. Um, and so ever since then, I've really been working um, in this role and other roles to continually master this craft of, of teamwork and teamship. Um, and I like to think that through that, I'm taking it to the next level. So there you go. Fair enough. Fair enough. You win. Great stuff. And uh, and your role at Microsoft? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm a product marketing manager, um, which really means I work really closely with our sellers and partners such as Lifetiles to support our customers through the adoption of our technology um, and really help them get the most out of the product. Um, for me, that's Microsoft Teams um, and supporting with everything from adoption to feedback on new features um, and how we can really help make sure that they're getting the results they need from the product for their organization. Excellent, which is ex the exact reason why you're sitting here with me today virtually across the world. Great stuff. <laughs> Uh, the About Us slide, I've been showing this quite a few times. If you've uh, returned guests, uh, you will have seen this a few times. So this is us, a global company specialising in employee collaboration and communication software and services, and we're in a number of locations. So I'll quickly flick through that one. Let's get to the agenda. Uh, so, you know, what are we going to cover today? Well, um, again, as I say every week, this isn't a lecture. It's a conversation. It's interactive. So, you know, ask the questions that you want to ask. Um, there's the option there in the software to be able to ping up a, a question for me or Jazz and I can I can answer, answer or ask them on your behalf. Um, or if you want to take it offline at the end of this session, more than happy uh, to chat with you after that. You will have our email addresses at the end of this and um, yeah, fire away. So today what we're going to look at is um, <clears throat> the latest. So I'll get Jazz to update us on what's been happening in the world of Microsoft Teams of late. Uh, the numbers, the updates, that sort of thing. And then we'll move into some of Jazz's must-do tips for reaching Microsoft Teams Nevada. And uh, then the next one is what I'm really looking forward to, is which is the customer story. So Jazz has got a couple of great ones to share with us. They're sort of in and around the whole COVID-19 issue. So uh, if we have time, I might even share one from, from our company as well. Um, next up, we'll get Jazz to talk about some of the great ideas that have been thrown around inside Microsoft for, for Teams and where that platform is heading. And then finally, I'll give you a bit of a rundown on how uh, Microsoft, uh, sorry, how Live Tiles could help you uh, with implementing Microsoft Teams, no matter sort of where you are in terms of your uh, Teams journey. So uh, there was a question here from Chris Murphy: Why aren't you doing this via a Teams Live event? We were just talking about that uh, before we jumped on here. Um, Live Tiles has been using GoToWebinar for quite a while now, and I guess with the, all the changes that are happening through the world. We've just sort of stuck with this for the moment, but we are definitely considering our options as to how this, this all works. There's quite a few different moving pieces in terms of this piece of software and how it works and then um, what we want to achieve with, with these ongoing webinars. So it is definitely on the agenda. Uh, and thanks for your question there, Chris. All right. Okay, so look, I mean, it's it's obvious that uh, by you can see behind myself and Jazz, we are working from home, and the remote working model has been adopted by so many companies at the moment, and um and and with that, the the usage rates of Microsoft Teams has absolutely skyrocketed. So, um, Jazz, how do you describe Teams to companies who are yet to adopt the solution? Yeah, so it's really the hub for teamwork within Microsoft 365. 
Um, and what that means, it brings together all of the elements of your productivity suite into one hub um, so that you can really get all of your teamwork done effectively across your entire organization, whether that's with your knowledge workers in your office and your traditional headquarters or anyone that's working on the front line as well. Um, so bringing that together through chat, um, through calling and meetings, through collaborative virtual workspaces, and then of course the integration of works and application um, integration that organizations are already using to get a lot of the other things they need to do within the organization completed. And uh, obviously there's been a massive increase in users. What are the latest stats you've got around the number of users for Teams? Yeah, I think the latest was around 44 million. Um, wow. Which is which is massive. Um, I don't have the the numbers for Australia specifically, but um, we've actually released a, a blog recently that calls out some of the interesting um, insights that we're seeing as part of that. So obviously, there's a, a lot of people that have been using Teams maybe for things like chat or file sharing, um, yep. but through this time, we've actually seen um, people doing twice as many meetings um, with as Microsoft Teams meetings, um, and turning on a lot more um, video calling. I think yep. a lot of people um, will remember back to the days of Skype. And even when I started working at Microsoft, video wasn't really a thing. It was a feature, but no one really turned it on. Um, and I think generally we saw a massive increase with that in Teams, but it's just completely blown up um, since then. I think um, we've actually saw that 57% of Australians using Microsoft Teams turn on video. Um, so one of the top countries wow. in the world. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I, I've been using video a lot as well, but as I'm, my beard is getting longer and my hair is getting longer, I'm thinking I might have to maybe put up a photo of me and just use that instead of the live video because it's, it's getting worse and worse. My wife has told me that I'm turning into Seth Rogen, she said, who oh, this God. looks like. <laughs> uh, look, with, with that explosion of, of users, it would have been great to spread them out across uh, a full year perhaps, but uh, it really has been absolutely full on the last sort of six weeks or so. Um, what are some of the new features of Teams that have, have attracted all those users over? Yeah, so I think um, I've got a couple um, coming up in our sort of future of Teams section as well, but there's quite a few things that um, a lot of Teams users have been asking for for a while. Um, I think one of the ones that I'm missing right now is custom backgrounds. Yes. <laughs> um, I think the ability to decide where you're working from. Um, so we've actually rolled out um, background effects, which means that you should be able to select um, different background effects within your Teams um, background blur option today. Um, yep. But with custom backgrounds, you'll actually be able to upload um, the images of where you want to work from. Um, so I'm, I'm working from Canada right now with my family and I had a lovely image of the lake in my background, um, which is really nice um, to have and just kind of lighten up um, the situation and, and everything that's happening. A couple others um, that I think are really going to help with um, the very meeting heavy, virtual meeting heavy situation that we're in um, are raise hands, which is actually a feature that allows you to indicate that you've got something to contribute to a conversation. Um, I think based on all of our different styles, we we all tend to um, integrate and try to um, give input in meetings very differently. Um, and I think it's harder for some people to sort of speak up um, or not want to speak over people. And so this feature is really uh, designed to help people with that. Um, the other one is end meetings. So I think um, it's great to have the ability to record meetings. But if someone forgets to hang up, then you've got a very long recording of one person <laughs> that's just forgot, <laughs> forgot to hang up the call. Um, so end meeting will actually let you end that meeting and, and then not have to worry about that. Nice, nice. Uh, oh, I've got a bit behind on my slides there. Apologies for that. Um, all right. So obviously, um, you know, setting Microsoft Teams up is it's a it's a big thing. Um, and you've you've got some thoughts around some of the must do activities that we need to consider to to get the most out of Teams as as we look to find uh, Microsoft Teams Nirvana. So we'll work through the points on the screen here, and I'll play a little bit of devil's advocate here if you like, uh, and you can set me straight on whether I'm right or wrong. So. I want to know initially why is why is planning so important? Isn't isn't Teams just like an out of the box solution that uh, is going to solve every single one of my communications issues? No, Chris. <laughs> um, just. <laughs> Just like the adoption of um, any other technology, um, there's a lot of um, planning that needs to happen to ensure that your users are actually going to adopt the application in a way that's transforming the way that they're working today. Um, and so when we think about planning, a couple things that come to mind. One is just a very strong partnership between IT organization and the business. So really making sure that you're understanding what the pain points are of the business and how you can help to solve that. Um, with some of our customers where that hasn't necessarily happened 
happened as well, we see things like shadow IT popping up because the business has found solutions for the pains that they're feeling that they maybe aren't aware of that they can actually leverage today. Yeah. Um, and then another really big one is use cases. So um, several people have worked um, in environments where you've maybe got three or four different tools that do different elements of collaboration, but different pieces of it. Um, and so those environments can be really messy. Um, it's important for your users to understand not only how they're going to use the tool, so in which scenarios would they use a tool, when would they set up a chat versus a team, when would they send an email versus um, setting up a team, um, but also, um, yeah, also understanding um, what they're actually needing to do um, with, um, Oh my God, I completely just <laughs> what, um, what, they, what they are going from. So say they are using Skype and a couple other applications before, which things are going away to help to continue the simplification of that productivity yeah. environment and not just add another tool that yeah. people don't really understand or see the value in right away. Okay, you have set me straight. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> and what about this whole thing, I keep hearing this thing about this need for governance. Um, doesn't Office 365 just keep everything in line for me? <laughs> Your governance is... <laughs> Governance is one of the hottest topics, I think, in Teams. Um, and I think Absolutely. there's not, yeah, there's not a right or wrong way to do it. Um, it really varies for every organization, but I think having your governance plan built into your entire adoption plan is really important from the beginning. Um, and a lot of organizations, for really good reason, have um, the need to actually have a lot more um, governance in place. Um, they may need to have a process where there's actually only certain people that can create teams, and they're worried about having too many teams created at one time. Um, at Microsoft, we actually had a fairly open policy, um, and we're slowly now getting into the notion of moving away from saying, oh, I'll create a team site and we can collaborate yes. on the team site um, yep. to try and to say, hey, there's actually a team site for that. Like this would be perfect as a channel with an existing team that we have. So I think the key thing with <laughs> the key thing with governance is that um, we're here to help and, and lots of our partners actually offer really great solutions and support in this area too, just to make sure the organization's getting what you need and you're comfortable with them with the setup for you guys. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. You get so excited about how many teams and channels you can make you don't really think that you could be making a little bit of a mess by you know this proliferation of these spots yeah. to chat and you tend to forget well which one was that in so well, i think it's yeah. a really great point and, we, and we've certainly started to realize that within lifetimes and with our customers as well you know that we need to give them a bit of a hand to help sort of guide them within the in terms of that the governance section so yeah absolutely um this next one I, I find interesting we hear a lot of people sort of saying you know we talk about collaboration and they say oh we put we put teams in we we're collaborating that people will work it out for themselves but um it doesn't just work as easily as that does it <laughs> no not exactly oddly um i think we're we're all increasingly living in a world where our roles are way more reliant on other roles than our organizations to actually achieve not only what we need but what our organization's actually trying to achieve um and a lot of the pitfalls that organizations are seeing with projects and programs is that there's been a breakdown of that collaboration within the team. Um, so implementing Teams isn't uh, you know, gonna solve that issue for you right away, but building up the use cases and helping your users understand how they can use the platform to collaborate um, and really understanding their business needs. So is it just gonna be for an internal audience? Do they actually collaborate with a lot of people externally? And do you need to put certain policies in place to continue to allow them to do that? Um, taking all that into consideration and again, really building a collaborative approach across the organization when you're drawing up this adoption plan so that that collaboration is happening right from the beginning. Um, and I think one of the key things um, among that plan is really ensuring that you've got executive sponsorship and leadership behind you in this effort. So how does it fold into what your organization is trying to do more broadly so that you've got as much support as you need to drive it across the organization? And then uh, obviously Microsoft Teams is just going to solve all of my engagement issues as well, isn't it? It's just doing everything. <laughs> oh, you know, there's so many elements and layers to employee engagement, but um, I've been working um, predominantly remotely for the last year and a half. Most of my team is actually based in Sydney um, and I'm based in a different city. Um, and so it's even just little things sometimes. I think the biggest one for me is just the flexibility um, and mobility with Teams. So you're gonna get the same uh, experience on any application using Microsoft Teams, which means if I wanna take a walk um, while I'm doing a call, I can do that. I can do that from my phone. I don't have to be stuck to my desk. Um, if I need to take an urgent call, but I also need to go to the airport, I can do that on my way to the airport. So 
that flexibility really enables people to work from anywhere the way they want to work. Um, and it's also the ability to share your expression. So um, it, you want to be able to get people to understand your personality when you're asking for things, I think, being Canadian, I'm probably always over appreciative and overly thankful, but you want people to kind of get an idea of how you are um, and what kind of uh, emotions you're sharing behind some of the stuff that you're experiencing and going through through that. Um, things like turning on your video have a really ma major impact on employee engagement and then using things like praise to give recognition to your employees within um, the different teams you've got set up. And then I think the last one, which has really been um, a very big um, ask from a lot of our customers in terms of support is live events. So how do you keep your employees engaged and connected in a situation like this where you need to do everything virtually? And you can actually use Teams live events to, to help you do that as well. It took me a long time to get used to using the GIFs uh, in the office, but a lot of the younger people, I could see them within a Teams chat, they would have a whole conversation with GIFs. They didn't even type one word. It was amazing. But uh, I've also been really getting used to lately with this whole idea of having a meeting from anywhere. So usually every single morning, uh, except for on Thursdays when I do these, I, I get out of the house at 8 a.m. and between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. I go for a walk. But from 8.30 till 9, I have my daily whip with my team and I could be anywhere. It's just, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you know, getting, it's really... I was gonna say, other than the fact that I start to maybe pant a little bit because I'm walking too fast and I'm not that fit, <laughs> uh, they, they don't know where I am. <laughs> So. Yeah, no, it's really true. It's funny. My parents are still getting used to um, the fact that I'm a mobile worker. So whenever we're doing things, sometimes I'll be on my device, or I'll be on my computer and they're like, oh, so when are you going to start work? And I was like, I've been working. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get it. <laughs> it's really good. Um, yeah. The, the last thing uh, which is really important is just thinking about integration. So, you know, some people say, well, if I'm implementing Teams, I can just do away with my email, my intranet, my knowledge base, my external systems. But it's not really about doing away with them. It's like finding ways for them to sort of work together, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I think um, as Teams has grown in the last three years, there's been a lot of debates over is Outlook going away? Is Yammer going away? Um, are we not going to have email anymore? And I think it's exactly like you said, it's just finding the place for those applications and solutions compared to when you're going to use Teams for collaboration. Um, I think the other key thing with integration in Teams is that we really want to bring together your entire workflow. So what are the other processes that you're managing outside of Teams and how can you integrate those into the system itself? How do you prevent yourself from getting distracted when you're looking for a file or looking for a piece of information. So building a virtual space for yourself where you can actually house all that information in one place yeah. um, will really help your users be more productive. Yeah, um, some of the, the people on the on the chat will be Lifetiles customers that have got the, uh, the Wisdom Intelligent Internet solution and might be familiar with the power panel that sort of sits within Teams uh, purely for that for that reason these days so we can sort of have everything coming into one area. Um, I sort of liken it uh, for people of my age, we talk about Voltron uh, from the 80s being a robot that was combined by five or six uh. different robots to create a massively great thing. But with today's uh, today's people, maybe I need to talk about the Avengers that, you know, you've got this team coming together with all these different parts just to create this great super experience. That's how I sort of see teams and certainly it's the way Lifetiles is interacting with it now as well. Yeah, amazing. All right. I've lost you with the Voltron reference. I know that. It's okay. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I didn't have TV for a couple of years as a child. Does that buy me any kind of a pass? There will be there will be some 40 year olds in the uh, in the audience today. They'll be nodding their heads, knowing what Voltron is. That's okay. <laughs> so we should have planted move... a reference. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's move on to the important stuff. This is what I've been looking forward to, which is which is the customer stories. So. Um, <clears throat> I know from you know our experiences with with our uh, with our customers at Lifetiles that uh, implementing Microsoft Teams is not a one size fits all proposition, and we've just talked through you know some of the reasons why that's true. So, um, tell us about some of these customers, what they've been doing from from your experience. Yeah, absolutely. I think. Um, We've had a, a very um, strong base of customers um, that are very knowledge worker centric um, with teams. So um, a lot of the traditional parts of an organization, marketing, comms, um, project teams within organizations. And I think um, shifting to remote working for a lot of them um, was actually just enabling to do that maybe from a technical perspective within their organizations and starting to change that culture in a situation that they, they really had to make that change. Um, and that's amazing because it means that a lot of these organizations that were actually planning to do that um, and planning this as part of their digital transformation have actually been able to go ahead and do that quite quickly. I think the biggest learning from our customers 
past few weeks um, and, and biggest call out for help was, hey, we want to do this really quickly. Initially, we were thinking we we're going to do it in three or four months. Now we want to do it in three or four days. Um, but the key thing is that they still want to make sure that security, governance, compliance, all these things are still taken into consideration when they're setting this up so they don't run into challenges as they're going through the situation, which we obviously don't really know how long it's going to last or really what the world will look like once this is sort of over. Um, so I thought I'd love to just touch on two customer stories that actually focus more um, on frontline um, in two of the industries that um, Teams is actually helping to support in Australia. Uh, I can't mention the, the customer names, but I'll just talk a little bit through um, through each of these examples. So the first one is actually in public safety. Um, and so this organization was very challenged with a lack of corporate mobility, um, very stuck in traditional working in an office, um, poor field um, collaboration, and just not having a standard communication tool across their entire organization. So this actually led to um, a large lack of coordination. Um, they didn't have um, much situational awareness. And once the situation started to ramp up, it actually introduced a lot of um, challenges especially in terms of incident response. Um, so they actually moved ahead um, their team's deployment and said, we actually want to do this within two weeks. Um, but we need to make sure that, yeah, of course, we need to make sure that we do it <laughs> compliantly um, and securely. Um, and so they actually um, took everything they needed to do from the planning perspective, spent two days mapping out everything they needed to do in terms of their use cases, um, ensuring they had the right governance in place, um, and actually went ahead and um, developed the scenarios to address the requirements that they needed in partnership with Microsoft um, to make sure that they actually were able to do this across not just the corporate devices that they had, but also the mobile devices that their users wanted to use as well um, to have that mobile experience. Um, so they were actually able to enable just over 10,000 um, corporates and mobile devices within that time. Um, including the deployment of security to ensure that everything they had was safe within the platform. Um, and now they're actually um, able to, to move ahead um, in a much more connected way um, in responding to the current situation um, and really taking a project that they thought would take three months and breaking it into two weeks um, to make sure they had oh, that wow. impact as soon as they needed it. Yeah, really amazing. Yeah, that's unreal. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next one's actually in healthcare. Um, so, Compliance and governance were two very big considerations for this customer. Again, they had been thinking about teams for a while, but just still working through the planning and the use cases. Um, once the situation started to take place, they really needed to deploy teams very quickly to support communication and collaboration. Again, of around 9,000 personnel um, within their entire organization, um, while ensuring that there wasn't any form of compromise to patient care, which is the key element of everything that they do. Um, so they're actually able to very quickly deploy the solution. They worked with a partner to ensure they had the right level of governance in place. And now, um, regardless of where um, the different doctors and nurses and medical staff are in the hospital, they're actually able to have virtual consulting rooms. Um, they've had a massive spike in usage just in the few first few weeks. Um, their executives are also running teams, um, meetings through teams. Um, and just within a week after everything was deployed, their doctors actually felt comfortable doing um, virtual ward rounds as an example with, within teams. Um, and so in this situation, it also enables them to really take into consideration the safety of all the people that are working in this situation. Um, yep. As an example, having some people that are in a quarantined area versus those that aren't, um, and being able to virtually consult each other without needing to compromise that, that safety. That is fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Please change it. I've, got, I've got a very quick one. So uh, a large government department that we were working with, uh, obviously COVID changed the game for them and they need to really quickly deploy a, a work from home solution, but they had nothing set up. Um, you know, the issues they had, they had, they had file shares that had poor performance over the internet. They needed to have a VPN to access them all the time. They had an antiquated video conferencing setup that, that only worked for internal people with a specific app. And then it didn't work across the VPN. Um, you know, they then obviously anybody who was going to be working remotely would have been isolated. There was no cross government agency sharing or collaboration set up. And they, they, they wanted to do teams, but they were really dragging their heels. There was some really, uh, a lot of internal IT resistance. They didn't need to see the need for remote solutions because somebody would say, oh, everyone's always in the office. Uh, we don't need it. And uh, they they actually saw digital transformation as just being an easier way to send emails. So, you know, so many issues to work through. But when, when COVID hit, they were like, oh, we've just got to go. Um, uh, 
so then what they did, they pressed the go button, and then all of a sudden, that was that was four weeks ago. Uh, they now have over a thousand teams and fourteen thousand users, so adoption rates have gone through the roof. And uh, that's also started to open up other opportunities for them with their whole Office 365 subscription, which they already had, but they just weren't utilising. So not only did teams come in and change the way that they were communicating, it changed a lot of other things in the flow on with some of the other Microsoft uh, products that they've sort of plugged in and turned on now. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's happening all over the place. Yeah, it's amazing. And I think um, you make um, a lot of good points. I think um, some customers aren't as mindful of some of the things that need to be in place before they can actually enable remote working within their environment. Um, and so I know a lot of our partners have been working really closely to ensure that while they're doing that, they're really creating the best end user experience. So that, that's awesome. It's a really great story. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, uh, we've sort of talked about how, how it's changing uh, companies right now. Let's have a little bit of a sneak peek into the future. So um, it is being used by a lot of people for a lot of different functions. But, um, yeah, let's get people excited. So what, what's going on with uh, down the pipeline for Teams, Jess? Yeah, look, I think a lot of our um, development in terms of things that are landing in the next little while is very centered on um, continuing to build up the meetings experience. Um, and so we touched on a couple of things earlier, but another um, big feature that a lot of people have been asking for is the ability to see more people within a video call. So now you've got your traditional yes. four. <laughs> Your traditional four people, um, we're actually going to have three by three video, which means we'll be able to have nine windows. Um, I know some people still want more. We're working on it. Um, but I think it's a great um, a great direction for us in terms of shifting from four to nine. Um, so that'll be coming um, later this year. Um, another ask that we get a lot from customers in the education space is really around being able to understand the participants that may have been part of the meeting. So teachers, as an example, want to understand which participants came in, how long were they there, Therefore, when did they leave? Um, even connected to um, learning in a lot of organizations and skilling. Yeah. Um, so that's something that's coming later this year as well. The so last time, which you may have seen um, a video on earlier this year, <laughs> is um, real time noise suppression. So um, we know that um, people that join Teams calls and maybe forget to join on mute when there's a lot of people that have joined who don't realize they're on mute, you get to hear some of the, the fun stuff that's happening in the background of their environment. I'm pretty sure a few weeks ago, I actually heard a hockey game happening in the background, which must have been a replay because <laughs> hockey is definitely not on right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we've actually got real-time noise suppression, which is actually using AI to reduce the distracting background noise, um, which is contributing to some of that noise in meetings. Um, so there's a really great video which actually shows um, someone eating a bag of chips on um, it's not on mute and you can actually not hear any of that sound so snack oh, away wow. um, and the AI will take care of it. <laughs> oh that's great I'll just eat some chips right now. <laughs> uh, quickly Jazz <laughs> just, there's just a, just a couple of questions from William and Scott just asking about what was the delivery date um, for the for the nine screen? Approximately? Yes, I think I'll have to come back and maybe I can give you the, the the exact date that we can share. I don't know if we've got an exact date or if we've said it's coming within the next few months. I'll just have to double check. Okay. Yep, sure. No worries. We'll follow up on that. Great <laughs> stuff. Thanks for the questions, peeps. No worries. So uh, anything else or is that uh, wrapping it up there? Yeah, look, I think just generally the future of Teams. Um, thinking about your chat and collaboration that your users are already using um, and starting to use hopefully today, the meetings experience, really leveraging live meetings. I think the next um, really key piece for me and a lot of organizations are already starting to work on this now is really thinking about how you integrate your existing workflows. So what other things are really crucial to your environment that need to happen? Um, maybe it's a process, um, inventory process or a tracking process that actually gets managed in a different system how can you use custom applications or things like power apps to actually help to integrate that within teams um, and so we were running a lot of workshops to help get customers starting to think about that another really important one to make sure that IT and the business are partnering very closely on so the business can actually bring to light which challenges they've got within those environments um, but definitely something that um, we're hoping to just continue to talk to our customers about to really keep building that um, simple and integrated productivity yeah, environment and look, there there are a few little questions here around uh, the video support. It seems like it's very uh, very uh, hot topic at the moment. But what we might do uh, in the in the email that will follow out from from this uh, session, we might get Jazz to give us a few um, links to different yeah, awesome. uh, 
of different things, yeah, that we can uh, get people to have a bit of a look at. So that's great. So I'm just thinking uh, in the interest of time, we probably need to uh, keep this thing moving. I apologise for running over time on this one. Maybe I need to uh, bump these out to 45 minute sessions. I, I thought we'd get through in half an hour, but that's okay. Um, so let me just take a very quick minute to, to sort of tell you how Live Tiles can assist you with, with your adoption of Microsoft Teams. Um, so you can see there, that's uh, Jazz's must do's back up on the screen there, uh, just to fr frame this all up. So um, the, our, our website, you can see that's our Microsoft Teams support services that we that we offer to help with all of these must do's that Jazz has mentioned earlier. Um, you know, first a funny story, uh, before Corona hit us, we, we created this fantastic card game to assist with implementing Microsoft Teams. You know, literally, you know, we had, a, we were playing it with some customers about two weeks prior to the Corona um, thing happening. And then all of a sudden, social isolation hit us. So we had to really pivot in terms of helping our, our customers plan out their, their Teams implementation. So um, we can't play it in person for now, but uh, we've applied the same insights and thinking to, a, to an online version of the game. Um, it's really useful. I've been involved with a few of these sessions with customers and it's amazing how effective it is at, at you know, drawing out the kinds of things you need to think about with in terms of implementing Teams successfully. So we now we now run those sessions virtually, if you like, by uh, using our, our Lifetiles page designer software to help um, assist with that. So that's, that's a really important step. It gets you to think about lots of different things. And on, on the website there, you can see some videos and some tips and tricks and some steps of how, how that can help. Um, Following on from that, um, we've also got a really effective uh, Teams planner. It's really simple. It's basically an Excel spreadsheet that's been built out to help you think about going a little bit deeper into planning out your Teams and gives you an overview of what you are actually creating, uh, the types of Teams and the access and all that sort of thing before you actually jump in. And it can really help you with the governance decisions that we sort of um, talked about a little bit earlier. I mean, that leads into a whole whole lot of, of other issues, a lot deeper discussion than we really have time for today. But uh, for sure, governance is a, is a massive issue that we need to consider. And it's probably not something you immediately think about when you're all wrapped up in the excitement of, hey, we've got teams, that sort of thing. So um, in terms of uh, collaboration and engagement, we've got a bunch of videos um, starring our, our team expert and customer success uh, champion, Molly. I've been working with her for the last couple of weeks on these. and We've, we've created about 20, uh, 20 odd short and sharp videos with really simple and effective tips and tricks. And she's absolutely wonderful. You'll, you'll love Molly. Um, she's such a, a, a lovely girl. She's fantastic, very smart. And the tips that she's been sharing are just absolutely awesome. They go for about 45 seconds or 60 seconds and she's straight to the point. And at the end of that, you're just, there's a bag of 20 odd tricks there that you can learn very quickly. It's really great. And then the last uh, element on integration is probably for those who are using Teams extensively and perhaps thinking how you might want to um, incorporate your intranet functions such as you know your people directory management, your corporate comms, your notice board, uh, procedures, bots, social feeds, all those sorts of things which sort of you know sort of in the past have sort of sprung out of the intranet. Well, you know. We have this little thing called a power panel, which I mentioned before, it comes part of the Wisdom Intelligent Internet, and it sits nicely in Teams, and it uh, handles all of that sort of amalgamation. So really what uh, what we've been working on with Teams is sort of augmenting an already awesome product with some of the, the bits and pieces of tech that uh, that Lifetiles are great at delivering. So it kind of makes um, Teams a bit of a one-stop destination for lots of different functions. And I even noticed uh, this week I've, I've installed uh, Yammer as an app into my Teams as well to add that element into it as well. So it's uh, it's it's all happening in the in the team space. So look, um, if you want to know anything more about you know teams adoption and that sort of thing, so uh, you can jump onto the solutions tab on lifetiles.myc or you can email email me and I can uh, point you in the right direction. That's my email address there on on the screen there if you want to jot that one down. Um, how did I go there, Jazz? Have I missed anything? No, that was great. Thank you. Thanks for that. All right. Well. Um, we probably don't really have time for questions today. So once again, uh, there's my email address there on the screen if you want to um, uh, get in contact with me and I can point you in the right direction with, with whatever you need. Uh, we'll follow up this uh, session with an email, which uh, as I said before, Jazz will give us a few uh, you know, key links that we can go and find out a little bit more information about um, post, the, post the session. So wonderful stuff. Next week, uh, got a little bit of a different pivot for you. Um, gonna have a bit of a chat about wellness uh, sorry, well-being and mindfulness with uh, somebody who I spoke to previously on the Intelligent Workplace podcast, uh, Nina Purewell. Uh, she is the uh, the co-author of that book there called Let That Shit Go, and she's also the co-founder of Pure Minds. Uh, fantastic backstory. So maybe before you uh, jump on next week's session, jump onto the Intelligent Workplace podcast and have a listen to her backstory. Um, the conversation that I had with her just really totally caught me off guard. 
Uh, it was really open and raw and, and fantastic talking about her, her journey into mindfulness. So I'm going to team her up next week with the co-founder of Life Tiles, Peter Newman Brown, who is also really, really interested in the whole um, wellness movement. Uh, he's the man behind Live Smiles, and we've got a bit of a new addition to that that we're uh, giving away. So uh, nice change of pace, but another piece of important information in the, in the current situation that we find ourselves in. So um Jazz, thank you so much for uh, joining me today from Canada. It's been fantastic having you on here. You shared some great insights, uh, some great features of Teams and some great customer stories. So thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, absolute pleasure. And uh, everybody else, uh, look out next week for the uh, for the next session. But uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today. I apologise for running a little bit over time, but uh, I thought it was a really great session. So thanks, and uh, we'll talk to you again. Cheers. Thank you.